Thinking about the benefits that people get from nature is really important because I think it broadens the constituency for conservation. You don't have to be a tree hugger or a naturalist or a bird watcher to appreciate nature. If you understand that nature is actually purifying your water and helping supply your food and slowing down climate change and protecting you from floods and things. My name is Taylor Ricketts. I'm the director of the Gund Institute for Ecological Economics, and I'm a professor in the Rubenstein School for Environment and Natural Resources. So the Natural Capital Project is a collaboration among uh, nonprofit organizations and universities to quantify these ecosystem services or these benefits that people get from nature. So the partnership is among Stanford University and the University of Minnesota and the World Wildlife Fund and the Nature Conservancy originally. So we've packaged up a lot of the models that we've built into this software package called Invest, which essentially prompts the user for the data it needs. It needs land use cover maps and a few tables of numbers that you can uh, assemble and then feed it. And it prompts you for those and then assembles those and runs its models to produce essentially a map of value, where the ecosystem services are coming from, whom they're flowing to, and what they're worth. So one of the specific ecosystem services that I work on most and most deeply is the pollination of crops by wild bees and other pollinators. So about 70% of crops in the world require bees or other animals in order to pollinate them and so they produce full uh, production, full marketable fruit. But I'm interested in whether the native bees that are in the landscape naturally can actually do a lot of these crop pollination services. Can they actually provide the pollination our crops need? I've also started up research here in Vermont to do very similar things, ask similar questions on some of the iconic Vermont crops like blueberries and apples and pumpkins and other squashes, those sorts of things. Again, to ask what the role of native pollinators is in helping farmers produce full crops of those, what the value of native pollinators and their habitats are for the pollination services they provide to Vermont crops. So some of the difficulties we found in doing this are that the science is actually difficult quantifying where these benefits come from, and most importantly, where they go, who benefits and how much, actually is a pretty big scientific frontier. And so the research, as it always is, is slower than we'd like in getting good at quantifying these benefits and where they come from and where they go. So that really is one of the big questions of the century, maybe, is how we're going to uh, feed and support a crowded, changing planet without undermining the ecosystems that provide a lot of that support in the first place. And some of the ways that this work I've been talking about supports that is to really understand how landscapes can be managed within the same landscape to support not only food production, but also biodiversity conservation. So how can a landscape be managed to um, allow farmers to make a living um, and uh, species like birds and mammals and trees to make a living as well? And that kind of optimizing of landscapes for multiple benefits, multiple goals, I think is something we can do much better. And I guess that's what this Natural Capital Project is about, trying to figure out where these benefits to people are coming from, where the biodiversity and nature values are, and how to manage these areas to get the most of both that we possibly can.